Hello, my name is Alan Madegua. I am a mental health advocate with Amazing Minds Africa. I am a student at KU pursuing history and art as education subjects. I am a human being. I enjoy art and um, any any form of art, so be it music, art, theater, drawing, all of that, visual, performing, I enjoy it. I I am a mental health advocate, so I teach on preventive and promotive strategies of how you can boost your 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 mental well-being from the spectrum of being ill to wellness, towards the side of being wellness. I'm a social entrepreneur, so I solve also problems for a fee. All right, I bring I develop solutions for a fee. Yes, so to either corporations or individuals. Um, coming into Amazing Minds, I found a group of people or peers who are like-minded, people who I could be vulnerable to, and uh, I would say about what I was going through, and I would not be judged, or rather be given advice on how to follow, but rather given just opinions. And then from these opinions, I would be able to form a hypothesis of where I need to go, where I need to direct my life towards. They challenged me not only uh, emotionally, but also intellectually and career-wise. So if there were people who knew about my diagnosis and in depth, it was my friends at Amazing Minds Africa. And family was involved, yes. My aunt knew about it. My mother, my father knew about it. My grandparents knew about it and they have been supportive in my in my recovery journey in the sense that they have always been there have been not have been a listening ear have listened to me yes there's judgment that you can't avoid that because you know they've seen you grow up so you can't just come and tell them you know this i'm not the kid you used to see anymore i have been depressed i'm now a new person no they still know you as that happy kid so they have listened to me and helped guide me in my path. And the good thing is that I listened also. So it's not a matter of um, of they were talking down to me or were, guide, were taking me by the hand. I, this healing of or treatment and recovery, it was a process that a journey that I took them along while I was healing myself. So it was not for them to take me along, but for me to take them along. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the sort of professional help that I sought was this counseling. Uh, I did not visit a, a real counselor, but a professional counselor, but I did, I did counseling while during forum theater sessions where we would come up together and then propose a story. So we could have to give this story with our real names and act and, you know, give out the, the secondary, secondary actors with their real names, or we could uh, just say it anonymously and, you know, give random names to the random people, or the second characters, secondary characters. So this story would be played out, staged out with bad outcomes being shown. And then from these outcomes, we would have the audience come in and change one or two things that is happening to the protagonist. And then from there, the Joker just directs so that there's equal opportunity, equal sharing of, of of information and that there are no magical solutions. So there's no something that pops out. These reali these solutions tend to become more realistic as they have been generated by the people within the forum and have been understood by the majority of them. So that's the sort of counseling that I took. The other form was <clears throat> the other form of counseling was buddy groups where we met where we attend people um, either with a similar illness or with just similar liking or we have a, a similar tendency towards say talking about mental health so we've set up rules um, these rules help us to guide our interactions with each other so that we respect each other and through the body groups i'm able to <clears throat> ask further clarifications I'm able to also, you know, communicate to them and tell them, hey guys, this is what I'm going through. This is what I feel. Or, or hey guys, I'm relapsing. Yeah, can you 
at least help keep me in check and you know with the buddy group it means buddy my friend you'll i'll help you my friend and you help me but that doesn't mean that you know i'll come and pull you out of your hole you must do it yourself but i'll guide you along the way so that for me has been the sort of counseling i've gone through i didn't need any medication to get out of that sort that depression that i had initially although i still have bouts of it i still have short bouts but <clears throat> I am on the road to recovery. If if I if if I am today where I was not yesterday, then that shows you that I have improved. Um, I did not experience a professional diagnosis because the moment I knew, I realized that something was wrong. It was from. It was triggered by a relationship. So when that relationship ended, I discovered that I was dependent on that person so much, such that forming new relations um, in the past, like forming new relations after that became a problem. So I found myself all, most of the time alone in my room, sleeping a lot, uh, always thinking and feeling, you know, uh, thinking and feeling powerless or helpless or pity uh, or in the in the self pity party so that's when i started to realize that something was not good with me or not going well with me at that time i was also out of school so even at work i would i would go to mjengo niende do something there for a while and if if someone or something got on my nerves, I just left. So I was being unproductive also in society, and that's when I realized that I I was not well. And um, so as I said earlier, I did not get professional uh, uh, diagnosis, but uh, being a student at Kenyatta University, I got a chance of interacting with. Amazing Minds Africa as a club. I just saw their poster and felt that they were talking on things such as, you know, resilience, emotional intelligence, intellectual quotient. I saw these and I was just like, wow, they relate to me. I would want to learn more on this. And for the first session that I attended, I realized that I, that my story was what was being portrayed there. And I could be able to get help or be able to get advice from not elder people or even younger people, professionals, but from my peers, and that you know they would help me come up with a solution to my problem, even without knowing that it was my problem. So that's when I that is in the process of diagnosis. So uh, in that, I did a lot of personality tests online. I also did. Um, uh, I also did self-assessment or self-awareness tests, both still online and also when we were doing them within the Amazing Minds Kenyatta University setup, I was able to at least be um, know that to some extent I was depressed and to some extent that uh, if I did not treat my or or in place preventive measures this depression would take me on a road that would not be very good or very light filled so I did not have any prior knowledge of mental health or related disorders I just you know you in society when we are okay, let me give you my personal story um, I I've lived in Kahawa Wendan West, Kahawa West actually, with a landlord who was a drug dealer. So he used to sell marijuana and you know he has sell marijuana from his house. So the whole household was also involved. And I came in and lived uh, as a, a tenant. He was my landlord. So in this in this place where you know society tends to think that you know, marijuana makes bad out of people i got to interact with a lot of drug users within kahawa west who came to his spot and i was able to see that it cuts across the demographic 
So it's not just the poor who are using drugs, or it's not just the middle class, it's not just men, it's not just women, it's not just the rich, it cuts across and everyone comes. You know, it's even from the smartly dressed to the shabby one, all of these people come looking for a drug. And this drug society assumes it to, you know, cause all the mental health troubles that we have, all the mental illness, schizophrenia, or depression, anxiety, but I would find that these people would in themselves uh, use this to medicate or use this to work or use this drug to, not that I'm advocating for it, but they would use this in that they have known themselves. Now they want to just express themselves and that's part of it, just part of that expression. They do not attach themselves to it, but that is their expression or their way of relaxing in the world. So that was what I would say my <laughs> prior knowledge on mental health and disorders within the societal setup. So, as I said, this is my personal story. So, at some point, I, I, well, we, we all lose people, right? That is something that's normal. It's normal in life. It's part of change. So, we lost five uncles, you know, just gradually one dies and then you know you just stay a few few years and then another dies so that in itself brought me to realize of the fragility of life and also to know that you know I'm here for a short period of time and when when my grandmother got depressed because of that she's at 70s my granddad is at is almost heading to 90s so when my grandmother was depressed i had this was my first out of school encounter with the with the term the depression uh yeah i would like to really let my story be out there to inspire others and to encourage them to know that they are not alone you are never really alone i used to think i was alone and uh but nowadays i do not i know that i have a family i have people not that I may not know that every one in four people will be depressed in life or will face uh, anxiety or we will have you know severe mental illness like schizophrenia in life. So if I count when I'm seated in a vehicle, I know that there are many of us or, or who are predisposed even when I'm seated in a bar or even in a vehicle, in class or just in church. I know that one in every four will will at least suffer from a mental illness in their lifetime. So I would like to have my story out there so that they know that you know it's a road to recovery. It's a journey. It's not just you know a stop. You you reach a certain point, you set goals and you say, I'm going to achieve these goals so that I am I am mentally better. When you move towards those goals you realize that you can still set further goals. So it's more of a journey that I would like to have other people come in. And also if with their individual resourcefulness, if they're able to contribute to helping other people get better, be it through Amazing Minds, be it through their own initial initiatives, or be it like with an organization such as yours, this would help people to get better and you guys you said you had uh, you had health as a thematic area and in regards to policy if you're able to promote uh, policies that enable people to to feel less stigmatized because of how they were or who they were diagnosed to be or how they f- think about themselves or how they feel then we will make the world a better place so i would i i I would it's something that i would like for it to be out there okay so my journey to recovery uh, my journey into mental health advocacy Uh, it began in 2017 as i said i was just a student and I saw a poster here, Amazing Minds Africa. I decided, let me go to this event because I'm feeling, I was feeling a bit low. At that time, I had a girlfriend and, you know, I had walked all the way from Kahawa West overnight to, uh, from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning, all the way from Kahawa West to uh, Desta at the river. And then when I reach, she breaks up with me. 
you know, I have to come back home to this reality that, you know, she's not here with me anymore. And then she came and took her clothes away so that to prove that reality that she's not in that life anymore. If, incidentally, on that same night was when Amazing Minds was holding their sessions. So when I came in, I was able to meet new other people and be able to interact with them such that I forgot about what I was going through, which was a breakup. I found it easier to just pass through it with friends or pass under it or pass above it with friends rather than, you know, stay in that pain alone. Because being alone, I would not have been able to see past it. I was not able to see past it. I was feeling powerless. I was res- I was sleeping a lot. I was not you know, feeling disempowered. I was being unproductive. But with my friends, I was able to, with my friends, my newfound friends at Amazing Minds, I was able to cut off uh, bad habits such as, you know, uh, such as that negative thinking. I was able to produce things daily, learn on, learn and be able to grow myself as an individual, learn about awareness, self-awareness, learn about uh, individual res- uh, resourcefulness, learn about resilience, the ability to not only come back after falling down, but to thrive, to go up and be more than, you know, what you fail at. And also I learned about self-efficacy, the belief in me that I can achieve what I set out to achieve. So uh, within the the following year in 2018, I became a um, chapter vice president. So I was able to coordinate uh, all the chapter activities with with the with the help of the whole uh, team. So we had a president, vice president, a treasurer, secretary, and uh, facilitators or or trainers of trainees. So these are guys who would you know facilitate a session, a joker, and would help to bring more people on board and also train them should they need. Uh, any knowledge on that. So I was I was actively involved in body groups because that's where I found my healing and also in forum theatre because that's also where I also found my healing. Um, I took up animation a bit but it did not, did not take off because of the need at that time uh, for, for the theatre and body groups were the focus for, for that period, <clears throat> for that period of time. Um, I have so far attended several trainings on, on you know, mental health and mental wellness, and even general, just health. I, I have learned a lot with, from 2018 till now. Even I'm still in the process of learning. I've received training from AMA, from Cities Rise, from Basic Needs, Basic Rights, from Wellness Center in Kenyatta University, Wellness and Rehabilitation Center, in Kenyatta University, I've received training from CPHD. I I got a chance to become the secretary to the secretariat. So I've been involved in a lot of organizational stuff in in regards to you know uh, promoting awareness and also creating this advocacy and replicating the effect that that forum theater and that body group had on me. So in my sense of advocacy, I seek to replicate uh, the change that occurred in me, for I am the change that I wish to see in the world. If I was able to overcome depression and lived in, the, in those environments but were not able to to you know succumb to them, I'm now living in Kayole, I have not succumbed to the environment, I'm able to thrive or rise above it, then I should be able to consider myself as an advocate for helping others to also thrive. Um, what would I like to say to the needs to be addressed by Kenya as a nation towards the handling and treatment of mental health disorders? The first for me is creating awareness or creating actually enhancing or streamlining awareness on mental health. If we can be able to destigmatize mental health, destigmatize stress, destigmatize depression, destigmatize fistula, destigmatize um, um, you know erectile function erectile dysfunction, destigmatize uh, schizophrenia, destigmatize paranoia, we would come 
you would go a very long way in 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 create in in reducing uh the number of people um exposed to this negative side of the of the continuum which is mental illness there's mental illness mental wellness and mental health so when we learn about mental wellness or we engage the audience or the or the nation in learning about mental health and mental wellness and then we give them preventive tips on how to avoid mental illness then we will have succeeded so mental health and mental wellness those are things like resilience of awareness emotional intelligence even coming up with uh, an entrepreneurial solution to your own problem you could be having money as a as a source of your stress so if you can be able to come up with your own way in your own mind self efficacy to be able to um to come up with a solution to your own problem that will give you money in return then you become a social entrepreneur you solved your problem you solved another person's problem so you have improved yourself towards being mentally well all right you move from being ill to being mentally well so we are all within this transition and it's not as i said initially it's not a uh, a stop or an event or a, or a stage it's it's a continuous problem or like a, it's it's like life in itself is 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 like a roller coaster so it keeps on going up and down it doesn't mean that when you're down you are really you just supposed to see life from there you can if you want it in your life or you can if you're in denial but eventually it just moves on the change is the only thing that's possible so creating more awareness and streamlining this awareness will help in you know it will help kenya as a nation towards handling and treating of mental disorders okay um the second one is push for push for and implement policies that promote mental well-being such as decriminalizing suicide if if you catch up if you get a person attempting suicide and you are able to save them the penalty should not be for them to go to prison or rather be imprisoned for a long time no no that you did not solve the psychological problem behind why this they were attempting it if we are able to decriminalize and then get psychiatrists and counselors into the system so that they are able to into the judicial system so that they are able to know that what this person was doing was not he he was not in their in his right mind so this punishment of putting him in jail for 20 years will not help him but would rather would would make him de- deteriorate more um then we will have solved a big thing and then also you will have prevented or taken away the stigma from you know he he or she attempted suicide or he or she did the bush or oh, he or she did this if we can be able to at least talk freely about this you know like initially create more awareness and then have policies in place that protect uh the innocent not the ones that you know are actually going around killing people no even for those they need psychological treatment but if we are able to decriminalize things such as suicide we can be able to get our people onto the road of wellness um within society the third point we should use fo- youth focused groups so that they can be able to not only create employment but be able to reach out and give evidence based feedback so evidence based feedback is in the sense that um, these youths will be able to talk to more youths what they gather from those other youths it will be what will be used as evidence that this is the impact of what the training we we invested in the initial youths to train the other youths has brought out which in in this could be reduced uh, reduced uh, crime rates reduced drug use reduced you know unwanted pregnancies or reduced abortions we could even reduce suicides the rate of suicides all right just by using youth focused groups within a communal setting to encourage mental health promotion 
and also to create awareness or create employment in while do while creating this awareness and also having in incentives for them in in regards to things such as youth fund and also grants and also exposure exposure to this to this uh, uh, fund generating uh, fund generating exposure to this fund generating uh, activities or uh, fund generating solutions that they have to like innovate and then come up come up with a solution to an existing problem and then funded so that it's locally we are also able to use our local our local innovations we are also to encourage our local grown mental health innovations that will target the majority of the youth and also contribute to the you know sustainable development goals so that the solutions they create or the solutions that we nurture locally by you know these incentives youth fund uh, grants we are able to to contribute to the sustainable development goals which will help kenya grow as a nation for for in 10 to 20 years to come it will not be the same same you know uh, age group seated on the leadership posts it will be the youths who will have taken over and if these youths are in line or already aligned to attuned attuned to sdgs it will be easier for us to also it will be easier for the generations that will come after us to be able to also attune to them and then all and and then also create um a more productive more productive more viable and more aware society a more aware society of people who are able to to stand up for their own rights stand up for for their well-being for what they know is towards their own good um so the last one would be to use to keep use and implement data uh from research obtained like in the in the setup in the communal setup like when you train 10 10 tot's a train of trainers you take them to the community say in kayole you bring them to the social hall uh through advertising and marketing, they're able to attract youth to come to the social hall. And then from the social hall, you're able to 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 get say to reach out to a hundred a hundred consistent uh, youths who will, who will have attended the session say for a week. A hundred consistent youth will have learned something within that week. You give them feedback forms at the start in in course, and then towards the end, you get the, what what they were thinking or how they were thinking in mid course and then now that the course has ended what how has the course affected their their lives and then the impact assessment now now comes in where will where you'll measure the impact well you you use that data feedback and also you use uh, other groups feedback like the police uh, hospitals um a local administration office you'll use now their data to compare with your data so that you'll 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 see markers of successes such as you know reduced poverty reduced increased increased awareness reduced crime increased uh, increased entrepreneurship increased levels of self awareness and self love you know such of sort so using this data to be able to help you for for also for future references and also if you want to scale up if you want to scale it up you can use this data for data that you have collected from the research to so scale if up. you suspect, suspect that you have a um, mental health disorder but you do not know how to address it the first thing i would urge you to do is to breathe relax breathe in breathe out relax be aware of your situation understand that initially you are normal and also if you have a pen just state it down write it down i am normal what how i was normal and then when the illness came what changed or when did you start changing what changed in your behavior emotionally physically psychologically psych psych wise what changed and then now that you 
you you've noted how you are before and how you are now how would you like to change in future like if you got a chance of being better how would you want it to be like and then you need to seek information so for you to inform that plan to head out to the future you already have a purpose to get well and then the plan is you how you want to see yourself in future so emotionally physically psychologically you now seek information for so my people die because they lack knowledge you need to have knowledge so seek information and get validated information if it's possible visit kenyatta national hospital they have a mental health unit uh, you can get more information from there if if you have in, if you cannot also go there you can visit online but just seek, seek ones that are approved by ministry of health for some may do more damage than m- m- some information may do more damage than good so if you seek that which is validated you'll be able to help in in your process of healing um also seek professional help if if it's really 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 bad seek professional help if you know that you you are in trouble and only you can know that if you know that you're in trouble seek professional help if not um seek an alternative such as uh alternative methods such as forum theaters or body groups seek groups where you do not just talk about ball or you know gossip but you talk about how you feel inside and how you you really really are in your situation and also how can you how you can help others come out of their situation or or in that sense like groups that in your environment take care of your environment seek an environment that promotes your positive well-being rather than one that brings you down also if you can be able to get to people who have lived experiences of what you have i do not know what you have you may have schizophrenia you may have you know anxiety depression mild depression or mild mania you might be manic that doesn't mean that you are alone there are people who have lived experiences and if you can be able to get to them or can be able to you know in the process of seeking validated information like you're able to connect to these groups of people who have lived experiences or who have taken people who have taken care of people with lived experiences you will be able to enrich yourself knowledge is power you'll be able to empower yourself give yourself the freedom to know that you can be well and you are in the process in the transition points of uh moving from being mentally ill to being mentally well and being mentally wealthy all right so and know that know and understand that, that this is the most vital part know and understand that you're not alone you are not alone in your situation there are many like you as i said one in four people are going will face will face a severe mental health illness in their life and this is not just me it's world w world organize world health organization statistics so if you know this then you are at a greater point of of information you are at, at an advantage point information wise and you can be able to overcome your situation and be the champion that you are so for me i would like to encourage you to step into your potential I'm actually welcoming you to step into your potential, overcome what you're going through, face your fears, and then come out triumphant. For you, I created the image and likeness of the Most High. So, you know, you have his ability. You just need to plan, you know, have a purpose. If you're going through something, know that you no, know, it's temporal. You are life is like a roller coaster. You're up and then you're down. So it's for you to live in the moment when you're up enjoy the view when you're down enjoy the darkness also because next up next you're going up so also find your way find your own way why do not have you know the main way for you to heal or or, or recover if it's made if it's seeking professional help seek if it's uh, body groups like it worked for me or for amtheater like it worked for me then well and good you know your own medicine